future greatness by some young Bulldogs. 1983 was a year of team growth, individual achievement, and plenty of special thrills and excitement to say nothing of making it through rain or shine. Crowd ever, nearly 28,000 in the doghouse. 
The FSU offense got hot as a firecracker at just the right time. And the defense snuffed out the Reno fuses when threatened in this 24-22 victory. For instance here, Willie Renneville recovers a Wolfpack fumble, which helps set up field position for Fresno's scoring drive one series later. Sweeney goes over the middle to Mark Bebout for 11 yards. Bebout doing a better job of holding on than this pep squad member. Next, Sweeney hits Laval Thomas with a screen pass. Thomas breaking the tackle and going 16 yards. FSU song leaders respond with some good moves of their own. Todd Russell has to jump high to pull in this pass. Holds on as he is hit hard for a 24-yard gain. The scoreboard even gets into the act. And Sweeney and Willis respond to the message, hooking up on this touchdown toss. More aerial fireworks for Air Fresno to open the second half as Sweeney hits Larry Willis with a 26-yarder down the sideline. A few plays later, it's Joey Little with his first touchdown catch of the season from 11 yards out. On Reno's next series, free safety Curtis Allen quickly shuts down the Wolfpack with this interception to get the FSU offense back on the field. Two Sweeney to Little passes set up the eventual score, one for 13 yards, the other a sliding grab good for seven. Running back Ken Williams scores the touchdown on this rollout pass, which is enough to make the most famous of all the Bulldogs think he's on a Hawaiian beach, not doing a good imitation of the hula. Each time Reno threatens, Fresno's defense comes up with a good play. John Demolani made five unassisted tackles, plus bats away this surefire touchdown pass with an acrobatic leaping deflection. And then, when Reno does score to go ahead by one point and tries a two-point conversion, Paul Damlin makes the tackle, thus giving the offense a chance to win the game on a field goal instead of a touchdown. With 2.30 left in the game, Sweeney and his young teammates start a final drive. Three big plays set up a dramatic finish. First, Sweeney to Eric Redwood for 16 yards. 2.16 left, Sweeney down the sidelines to Willis, who steps out of bounds, good for 14 yards, and putting him over the 100-yard mark in receptions for the second straight week. 2.10 left, Ken Williams burst up the middle for 18 yards, and a first down to the Reno 11-yard line. Three more running plays get the ball to the four, and the clock has been run down to just 12 seconds left. Senior Rocky Costello splits the uprights with a 21-yard field goal, and instead of fireworks, it's dynamite, as the Bulldogs triumph 24-22, and Costello reflects on his winning field goal. I hit it good. I knew it was good as soon as I hit it. But it's just like a PAT, like I said. Just concentration, that's a matter of opinion, all it was. Fresno State next goes on the road for the first time to Stockton. Jim Sweeney looking for his seventh straight win without a loss against the UOP Tigers. The Bulldogs don't waste any time as Kevin Sweeney and Rip Fritzer combine on a 16-yard pass into Pacific Territory. The offensive line gives indication of what its effort will be on the night, escorting Ken Williams for a 12-yard gain. A few plays later, Rocky Costello makes its re-zip with a 28-yard field goal. The next time Fresno gets the ball, it will mean more points. Two big plays set up a touchdown. Williams first up the middle for 23 yards, and then Sweeney to Larry Willis on a 49-yard beauty all the way to the Tiger one-yard line. Big senior Kenny Williams, who would have his best night ever as a Bulldog with 108 yards, takes it into the end zone, and it's 10 to nothing. Against a hard-charging FSU defense, the UOP quarterback has a tough time deciding which way to go. Willie Renneville taming this Tiger for an 18-yard loss and helps set up field position moments later for a 49-yard booming field goal by Costello, and it's 13 to nothing. But FSU wasn't through yet in the first half. As the defense makes another big play, Howard Jones recovering a Pacific fumble on the UOP 34-yard line. Two pass completions from Sweeney to Willis, the first for 14 yards, the second for 12 yards and a touchdown, and the Bulldogs lead 20 to nothing at halftime. Following intermission, Fresno uses the same combination of the defense giving the offense good field position for touchdowns with turnovers. Clyde Glover here forces a fumble, which is recovered by teammate Dennis Mitchell. A few plays later, Sweeney to Willis for an 18-yard score. Larry making it three straight 100-yard-plus games in receptions with a total of 154 yards on 10 catches. The Bulldogs' final score is set up by the PC2A Defensive Player of the Week, free safety Curtis Allen. Allen makes a juggling interception at midfield and then returns the theft 17 yards to the UOP 33. Allen also recorded 11 solo tackles on the night. Fresno eats up four valuable minutes off the clock with Eric Redwood chalking up the final yard. And Fresno State crushes the University of Pacific 34 to 14. Following the conference victory, senior center John Stevens compliments the Red Wave following on the road. Yeah, it just gets to be like a home game. The way we travel for hours, the way we had for our travels is a lot of nerves. 
junior Craig Shugart enjoyed an outstanding game against Montana State and finished the season with 11 catches good for 142 yards. Senior Mark Devout saved his best catch for an unforgettable touchdown against Long Beach, which we will see again later. The running backs were expected to catch the ball coming out of the backfield as well as run that field. Several performed both chores very well, led by senior Ken Williams, who led the team in rushing and was fourth in receptions. Ken combined for over 500 yards in total offense. Senior Eric Redwood was the leading rusher getting into the end zone, scoring five times. Again this season, sophomore Lavelle Thomas was the Bulldogs' most punishing runner, and he sported the best average of over four and a half yards each time he carried the ball. Lee Bell Tatum showed considerable promise as a freshman, finishing behind Thomas with just under a four and a half yards per carry average. Doing a good job in spot situations were seniors Lafayette Fletcher and Dave Adams. Adams was the only running back with over 10 carries to have not lost a yard on any rushing attempt. Adams was called upon when Fresno needed a sure one or two yards in third and fourth down situations. Fresno's offensive line was hit hard by graduation and then injuries as the 1983 season unveiled. By the end of the year, though, it was playing like a unit who had the opportunity finally to get all the right gears into the game at the same time. This was exemplified by two offensive linemen receiving second-team all-conference honors, senior Mike Forrest and junior Tom Cavell. Besides four-year Letterman Forrest, the only other senior who will not be back in the offensive trench next season will be center John Stevens, who was one of the outstanding team leaders on and off the field. The 1984 good news is the development and maturity exhibited by juniors Rich Henson, Jerry Lockwood, Dan Rogers, and Darrell Larimer, and sophomore Vince Salazar, plus freshman Mike Savage. The offensive line is to be credited for helping Fresno State lead the pass-conscious PC2A in aerial offense in 1983. The Fresno State offense certainly policed up the opposition in 1983, and maybe the vocal group police had the Bulldogs in mind with their 83 hit. to get high marks in two mid-season victories over traditional rivals Montana State and Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. It was a cool, crisp day in Bozeman, Montana, the kind Bobcat fans wanted to enjoy on Montana State's homecoming. But it was some Bulldogs who staged a homecoming party of their own. Father Jim Sweeney returning to the city where he got his college football coaching start. It was also homecoming for son Kevin Sweeney who was born in Bozeman. And it was homecoming for linebackers coach Cliff Heisel, who played and coached at Montana State. Heisel particularly enjoyed an outstanding performance by the defense that allowed Montana State only 80 yards rushing. It was the punt return team that set up the first Bulldog score. Howard McNair first slows up the returner, and then Greg Ramsey supplies the hit that causes the fumble, recovered by FSU's Terry Dennis at the Bobcat 26. The big gainer is a first down pass to Dave Williams for 15 yards. And then on third and goal from the seven, tight end Craig Shugart needs full extension with his body to make the diving touchdown reception his first as a Bulldog and one his head coach called awesome. Late in the first half, Fresno starts another drive. Eric Redwood uses good blocking to gain 15 yards up the middle. Then to the air on third and eight, with Sweeney finding Dave Williams for 16 yards. Back to the ground with another Williams, Ken bursting up the middle for 13. Dave says it's his Williams turn next, so Sweeney agrees with a 15-yard completion. When it is third and 15 a few plays later, Sweeney goes to his other W, as in winner, Ole Willis. Waiting to just before he is run over by the stunning Montana defense, Sweeney fires over the middle to Larry Willis, who runs it in for the touchdown as Larry continues to lead the nation in the number of catches per game. The defense sets up two more FSU touchdowns with plays like these two pass deflections, first by nose guard Bob Simpson, and then later by linebacker Jack Gusman, who also records eight solo tackles and two assists. Fresno's fourth touchdown came on this Sweeney pass to senior Rip Fritzer, Kevin rolling out, Rip coming back for the ball from 10 yards out. Willie Renneville and Otis Tolbert combine on one of five quarterback sacks on the day as the defense shuts out the Bobcats over the last 38 minutes of the game, allowing only five first downs in 11 Montana State possessions. 
The last scoring of the day starts deep in Fresno State territory. Swede is shoe guard for 16 yards. Then Lavelle Thomas breaks it out to midfield with a 21-yard gallop. And then a couple of Chris Mendonca rollout sweeps put the Bulldogs in Rocky's range. Rocky Costello hitting his eighth straight field goal for Fresno to make the final score 31 to 12. Jim Sweeney gets carried off the field on Bulldog shoulder pads, just like he used to on Bobcat shoulders. The Dogs defense again started against Cal Poly with four pass interceptions and a recovered fumble. The first interception by Curtis Allen here sets up the offense in good field position. Eric Redwood behind a Tom DeVille block scoops nine yards from where Kevin Sweeney locates his favorite target, Larry Wilkes, and Fresno is on the scoreboard to never look back. Two great plays follow. Both should have counted, but only one does. Mark Patton causes a loose pigskin with this tremendous hit on the Mustang receiver, allowing this dive interception by Jack Despot, who flies over bodies to snag it. A little later, Sweeney drops back and hits Willis on a perfectly timed 81-yard touchdown bomb which would have placed Larry atop the nation's leaders in pass receiving. However, an official claims an offensive lineman was downfield, which the films later proved not to be the case, but the play was called back. The defense again helps set up the offense with good field position, as Terry Dennis makes one of his seven tackles on the day, a 14-yard sack of the Cal Poly quarterback. It doesn't take FSU long to score when it gets the ball back. The payoff, a 13-yard touchdown pass from Sweeney to Joey Little, the Civil War cannon signaling approval. Another good play kept Cal Poly off the score more in the first half. That John Demolani pulled the ball away from the Mustang receiver at the last moment, saving what looked like a sure touchdown. In the second half, the defense was again on the alert. That senior linebacker, Howard Mayer, picks off this pass, which leads to a Rocky Costello 38-yard field goal. Field goal set up by this 53-yard bomb from Sweeney to Wilkes. The defense keeps making big plays. Senior Derek Franklin with excellent pass coverage to stop a long aerial attempt. This day, Fresno had its best offensive production of 423 total yards. The running game could be the passing game by one yard. Freshman Lee Bell Tatum sweeps to the corner for 17 of those yards in his most productive outing. Then as the fourth quarter starts, sophomore Lavelle Thomas powers over from the two-yard line. Final icing on the victory comes with Chris Mendonca at the home. The freshman signal caller finding tight end Joey Little for a big 28-yard gainer, followed by a 12-yard conclusion to junior Todd Russell. And then Rocky Costello ties the school record with his 15th field goal of the season, a 27-yarder. Two more pass interceptions keep Cal Poly from any serious threats. On this one, linebacker John Martin decides a lateral to Curtis Allen to keep the 27,000-plus fans entertained in a solid 30-7 victory by Fresno State. Any football success can be attributed to many ingredients, but certainly one of the most important in modern-day gridiron competition is weight training. Head coach Sweeney and senior John Stevens will tell you just how important Fresno State's new weight training facility is to the entire athletic program, Stevens adding strength and pounds for his senior campaign. You know, if you look at all the top programs around the country, okay, all of them have an organized weight program. And it was tough to organize a weight program here Without this facility, you now we have a strength coach, and we have this beautiful facility here, which makes the training easier, which makes organization easier, which makes checkup on the players easier, and it makes for a stronger team. Development of your full potential means that physically, spiritually, morally, educationally, and other, every other way, you're going to be as good as you can possibly be with your God-given potential. That means you're going to have a weight training facility, basically for an athlete, which will allow you an environment and allow you the apparatus that will allow you to become as big and strong as you possibly can be because it's, an, it's a game of size and speed and it's a game of strength and agility and coordination and all of those things come from weight training. We think our weight training room is as good.